Lawyers are central stakeholders in the functioning of our courts and active bar associations, such as the Nagpur High Court Bar Association. And they ensure that there is a constant and productive dialogue between the bar and the bench. Although many of us judges have been a part of the bar at different points in time, interactions with the associations ensure that we do not become detached from the everyday realities of our colleagues at the bar. The role of a bar association, however, must not be limited to only advancing the immediate concerns of lawyers. The role extends to a broader institutional responsibility to enhance the functioning of the judiciary and protect the dignity of the court. Bar associations must focus on improving the quality of advocacy at the bar and more importantly, making our courtrooms more accessible and safe for our citizens. Recently, the Supreme Court took SOMO to cognizance of an incident involving the manhandling of a senior advocate and a young lawyer in one of the district courts during a boycott called by the Bar Association not too far from Delhi. You are fortunate that these incidents are not par for the course in Nagpur. The specifics of this incident aside, it is incumbent upon the bar associations to ensure the safety of all the members of the bar when they come to practice before the court. With hybrid hearings, lawyers from across the country appear before courts in different regions. Bar associations must adopt a more accommodative and inclusive approach, ensuring safety and welcoming all the members of the bar who practice before that court. I was pleased to hear about the legal aid project called Nyaya Dut run by the Nagpur High Court Bar Association to ensure pro bono access to legal resources for persons residing in the villages in the Vidarbha region. I urge the younger members of the bar to contribute to such initiatives. It serves as an opportunity to not only use your premier education and training to secure justice to ordinary citizens, but it is also a way to sharpen your legal skills and advocacy. Similarly, the steps taken by the Nagpur High Court Bar Association to mentor and improve the skills of younger members of the bar by regularly organizing lecture series and study circles must be appreciated. My last act before I left my position as visiting, visiting judge at Nagpur to go to Mumbai was to deliver a lecture on international law, which the bar requested me to deliver. I must also highlight the importance of having an independent bar and, as a result, independent bar associations. The judiciary has time and again risen to the occasion to assert its independence and non-partisanship, a separation of powers from the executive, the legislature, and vested political interests. We must not forget, however, that there is a close link between the independence of the judiciary and the independence of the bar. The bar as an institution is essential to preserve judicial independence, constitutional values, and the dignity of the court. In a vibrant and argumentative democracy like ours, most individuals have a political ideology or inclination. To quote Aristotle, human beings are political animals. Lawyers are no exception. However, for members of the bar, one's highest loyalty must not lie with partisan interests, but to the court and the constitution. In many ways, it is an independent bar that is a moral bulwark to protect the rule of law and constitutional governance. Judgments of our constitutional courts are the culmination of rigorous proceedings, thorough legal analysis, and a commitment to constitutional principle. But once the judgment is pronounced, it is public property. As an institution, our shoulders are broad. We stand ready to receive both praise and criticism, bouquets and brickbats, be it through journalistic pieces, political commentary, or on the social media. But as members and office bearers of bar associations, with years of training and experience, you must distinguish yourself from the layperson while reacting to judgments of the court and engaging in legal discussion. Of late, I've been very disturbed by the tendency of members of bar associations to comment on cases which are pending before the court 
kind of commenting on judgments delivered by the court. You are first and foremost officers of the court, and the dignity and truth in our legal discourse is in your hands. As members of the bar, it is incumbent upon you to communicate the judgments of the court to the public, utilizing platforms such as opinion pieces in newspapers, media appearances, and public lectures. In this sense, the bar has the potential to act as a bridge between the court and the citizens. In fulfilling your role, the bar can effectively translate complex legal complex concepts and precedents into accessible language for the public, fostering a deeper understanding of our constitutional values and the true purport of our judgments. On many occasions, I have spoken about the need for representation of women in the judiciary and as members of the bar. Statistically, the number of women lawyers practicing across the country has increased manifold over the last few decades. There was a time when you would enter a high court or even the Supreme Court and only see a sea of men. Many female advocates recall a time when they were the only lawyers going through security checks for women, while long queues formed at the men's security check outside the Supreme Court. This situation is radically altered today with a large number of women not only formally joining the bar, but also setting up a thriving practice. Recently, the Supreme Court designated 11 women as lawyers, as senior advocates, in one go, signaling the change in the demographic of our successful lawyers. The Nagpur Bar is no exception. Of the 3,000 members, more than 500 members are women. As the demographics are changing in the legal profession and more young women are entering the field, this number will only increase. However, even as the number of women lawyers is increasing at an unprecedented pace, this trend is not reflected in the composition of our elected bar associations or even our bar councils. When there are no formal barriers to contesting elections and the number of women lawyers is increasing, the question that arises is, why are more women not contesting and winning elections to bar associations or bar councils? This lack of representation is not unique to the Nagpur Bar Association, but permeates to bar associations and bar councils across the country. A study which was conducted in 2021 revealed that only a meager 2.04% of the elected representatives in the 21 state bar councils are women. Not a single office bearer of the Bar Council of India is a woman. There is only one woman member in the Supreme Court Bar Association Executive Committee. Contesting elections for bar associations and for bar councils requires extensive networking, campaigning, and soliciting of votes, which often leads to the formation and perpetuation of an entrenched old boys club. This environment can act as a significant disincentive for women, discouraging them from participating in these elections, let alone engaging in campaigns and successfully winning them. It is not enough to remove formal barriers to women lawyers contesting elections. It is the responsibility of the existing male office bearers to not only encourage and support women lawyers who stand for election, but also make the environment conducive for them to stand a fair chance. I'm optimistic that the Nagpur Bar Association, with its glorious history of fostering social change, will take proactive measures in this direction. I also urge all the women advocates in the audience to assert their position in the Bar Association, come forward, contest elections, and hold positions of responsibility. In many ways, the city of Nagpur holds immense importance in the life of our republic and the life of one of the founders of our republic, Dr. Baba Saheb Ambedkar. It is here that Baba Saheb embraced Buddhism and his final remains are enshrined in the central dome of Diksha Bhumi Stupa. Additionally, Shantivan, housing a museum with Dr. Ambedkar's personal belongings, can be found in the nearby village of Chitsoli. This year marks not only the centenary of the Bar Association, 
but also a hundred years since Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar began his law practice. In honor of this milestone, the Supreme Court established a statue of Dr. Ambedkar, symbolizing his guiding presence as we fulfill our constitutional duties. In a sense, a little part of Nagpur is now forever a part of the Supreme Court. <laughs> Dr. Ambedkar's motivation to pursue a legal practice was rooted in the independence a legal practice provides. Legal practice was liberated from the feudal hierarchies of caste, which he fought against and mobilized public opinion. Dr. Ambedkar believed that in colonial India, the legal profession alone allowed an individual to remain independent from the government and social forces. He valued his independence from an undemocratic colonial government and a caste-ridden society over monetary or commercial gain. This motivation to pursue law for autonomy and freedom that the profession imparts stands true even today. The ability and responsibility of a lawyer to act without fear or favor, ill will or affection must continue to guide us as members of the legal profession. In a judgment authored by Justice Vivian Bose, a former judge of the Supreme Court of India and, and an illustrious member of the Nagpur High Court Bar Association of this court, Justice Bose observed the Constitution is not for the exclusive benefit of governments and states. It is not only for lawyers and politicians and officials and those highly placed. It also exists for the common man, for the poor and the humble, for those who have businesses at stake, for the butcher, the baker and the candlestick maker. Let us all remember that our constitution is an inclusive constitution. It is intended to bring together the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker. So just as this building is said to be a poem in stone, Justice Vivian Bose was a poem personified in verse as he wrote. I would conclude by saying that as you carry out your responsibilities as professionals, advocates, and officers of this constitutional court, remember that your foremost duty lies towards ensuring justice and upholding the rights of every individual, be it the baker, the candlestick maker, last but not the least, the butcher as well. Thank you, each of you carries a heavy mantle of excellence to uphold. I am certain that all members of the Bar Association will live up to the illustrious reputation of this historic Bar, embodying integrity, diligence, and excellence in your legal practice. Just as Gawai said before he ended that he is not making a long speech because he will speak tomorrow and come back during the year-long celebrations. I made a long speech, but I expect that I will also return during the year-long celebrations. Thank you. Namaskar.